nuclear power, but with thorium instead of uranium. That's an exciting possibility which could power the world for thousands of years. A group of Chinese researchers recently reported a world-first milestone with their molten sword thorium reactor. What else is happening with thorium-based nuclear power? Let's have a look. Using thorium for nuclear reactors has several advantages over the currently most commonly used uranium. One is that there's about three to four times more thorium in the Earth's crust, and it's a waste product of the rare earth mining industry. It also can't be as readily used for nuclear weapons, and the radioactive waste isn't as long-lived as that of standard nuclear power plants. The real advantage of thorium reactors this is, however, that they can use essentially the entire fuel, not just a small fraction of it, as is the case with the uranium reactors. This means thorium reactors produce more energy from the same amount of fuel, and as a consequence, thorium could last for thousands of years. The idea to use thorium instead of uranium, of course, isn't new. It's been used in research devices since the 1960s. Why didn't this catch on? Well, the major problem with thorium is that it isn't fissile. This means it can't itself sustain a nuclear chain reaction. Instead, one first needs to shoot at the thorium with neutrons. This creates an unstable isotope, which then decays twice and ends up as uranium-233. That's different from the commonly used uranium, but it's fissile and the chain reaction can then proceed with that. Once you have that, you can get the neutrons from the uranium. This causes more thorium to decay, creating what's called the thorium cycle. The big headlines out of China are now that they successfully bred this uranium-233 from thorium inside a nuclear reactor and then used the uranium to sustain the chain reaction. Though most of the energy of their reactor still comes from standard uranium, this is indeed a world first. Earlier experiments in the US and elsewhere showed that thorium can breed fissile uranium-233, but they didn't do the full cycle. The Chinese reactor is a small experimental prototype designed to produce 2 megawatts of power. It circulates the fuel in the form of molten salt and is currently the world's only such reactor in operation. The Chinese aren't the only ones who are interested in thorium. India has long been working on a program to get to thorium-based nuclear power. Last year, they entered phase two of three in that program. In this second phase, they plan to breed the fuel for the thorium reactors, but generally the progress in the Indian project has been slow. Earlier this year, the Indian government also signed an agreement with Russia's nuclear agency to jointly develop a thorium-based small modular reactor. And Indonesia has just approved site plans for thorium-based molten salt reactor from the US Singaporean company Thorcon. Besides this, there is surprisingly little going on with thorium-based nuclear power. The EU has funded some research and and startups like Thorizon and Stellaria are developing molten salt reactors with thorium fuel options. The French and Dutch governments have each pledged around 10 million euros for thorium research. Now, 10 million euros would be a lot in my bank account, but in terms of government investments, that's about one roundabout. The US government, despite being generally enthusiastic about nuclear power, has no thorium program either. There is some private sector work by a company called Clean Core Thorium Energy, but they just export that technology to India. Why is the West lagging so much behind here? I don't know. But I believe the major reasons are geography and history. China and India have a lot of thorium, but not much uranium. Western countries, in contrast, have easy access to uranium. Historically, Western countries have a nuclear infrastructure already. They've invested decades and billions into supply chains and reactor designs, and they have little desire to rip that up and start again. That doesn't mean the West can't catch up, 
but at the moment, China's taking the risks and building the technology. If their demonstration reactor continues to perform well, it could be the prototype for a new generation of safer, more sustainable nuclear power. And if that happens, then one day we might find ourselves buying Chinese thorium reactors. Vintage on sale. I used to get a lot of scam calls. And then I found out that this happened because my phone number had leaked from some websites I must have signed up to. I now have a new phone number and I'm signed up to Incogni to prevent that from happening again. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. It's really solved a problem for me, and maybe it'll help you too. If you use my code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.